So we are ready to start our second session um, the, on EMR and reimbursement. So we have three papers. Um, uh, the first, um, we have Healthcare Outcomes, Information Technology, and Medical Reimbursements by De Danish uh, Sa Saifi. Uh, then we have the adoption of EMR uh, systems. Do they inflate Medicare reimbursements by Karthik Ganju? And finally, uh, does IT enable revenue management in hospitals by Kang Kang Ki? Uh, so, without much ado, let's begin. Thank you, Dr. Mani. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Danish Safi. I'm a doctoral student in the Information Systems Program of the Business School in UT Dallas. This is a joint work with my advisor, Dr. Indrin Burton. I'll begin with the motivation behind our work. So. After PPACA Act was implemented in 2010, we have been seeing a transitioning period from a fee-for-service payment model to a, to a healthcare industry which will be, um, which will be dominated by pay-for-performance. Given this transition, we, we focused on a period from 2011 to 2013, which was still predominantly um, fo uh, focused on fee-for-service payment model. Now, after PPEC was enacted, the penalties which will be set in will be coming into picture from 2014 onwards. We expect to see a leading effect of those penalties in our study period. I'll discuss more about that as I move on. Another aspect of the reimbursement story is how we expect held IT usage to impact average reimbursements from payers, including Medicare. So in this study, we propose a unified framework which includes all the three independent, all the three key variables, that is um, average Medicare reimbursements, healthcare quality measured as re readmission rate and mortality rate, and health IT usage at hospital level. We focus on only heart failure patients so that the idiosyncratic factors that might be present at different DRG levels don't affect our findings. So, Beginning with the hypothesis, in our first hypothesis, we argued that hospitals with higher mortality rate are more likely to receive lower average Medicare reimbursements. Let me explain the motivation behind this hypothesis. As I said, Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act was enacted in 2010, but the penalties will start, uh, had started showing up from 2014 onwards predominantly. So when, when the penalties were designed, in effect, in a sense, we expect the reimbursements offered by Medicare to hospitals will be a function of um, the hospital's health quality outcomes measured as readmission rates and mortality rate. So what we expect is the period before 2014 and after 2010, which is our focus period, we expect to observe some kind of leading effects of that tie-up with the quality. So in essence, we are proposing that hospitals with higher mortality rate are more likely to receive lower average Medicare reimbursements. The second part of, part of our first hypothesis is that hospitals with higher readmission rates are more likely to receive higher average Medicare reimbursements. This basically is a reflection of the predominance of fee-for-service payment structure across the healthcare landscape in the United States even now. Now moving on to the health IT side of the story. We, we argue that hospitals with greater health IT usage are more likely to realize higher average Medicare reimbursements. So why do we argue this? We, we expect that hospitals with higher level of health IT usage will be able to make their overall reimbursements and claim pro claims process more efficient, thereby, um, thereby realizing more revenue from Medicare and other payers. But over here, we are focusing only on Medicare. Let me further elaborate. Um, consider a hospital which, which has implemented some health IT systems such as EMR, CPOE, and structured physician documentation. Such a hospital, compared with hospitals which doesn't have any IT system, will be able to better capture the, the diagnosis codes from the clinical side of the hospitals. The systems will then be able to streamline the information flow between clinical department and the administrative department. Further on, the information flow between the administrative department and the payers, including Medicare, will be further streamlined, 
again because of the health IT systems implemented between hospitals and payers. Given this, given this streamlining and seamless flow of information flow between the clinical department, the administrative department hospitals, and the payers, we expect to see an overall increase in the average reimbursements or, or reimbursements per discharge. Now, to further understand the dynamics between health IT usage and average reimbursements for Medicare, we also try to explore or investigate whether there are any mediation effects of health quality outcomes measured as mortality rate and readmission rate. I'll delve deeper into that story, I mean, after a few moments. So this is the overall conception model that we have examined in our study. The first one essentially tells the two sides of the story between health IT usage and average payments for Medicare. Now, coming back to the exploratory question of whether we expect to see any mediation effects of health quality outcomes on, uh, on the relationship between health IT usage and reimbursements, what we propose is that health IT usage is likely to impact health quality outcomes, and health quality outcomes in turn are likely to affect average payments from Medicare. Now, in previous studies, there have been um, lots of disagreements in terms of whether health IT actually has any kind of effect or whether it's positive or negative on health quality outcomes measured as length of stay, mortality rate, readmissions, and more than that. So what we find actually in our study is, as we expected, that we found, um, we found weak partial mediation effect of mortality rate on the relationship between these two variables, but we didn't find any, any effect of readmission rate. I'll, I'll delve deeper into that further on. <coughs> to investigate our hypotheses, we collected data from multiple sources. The three key independent, the three, the three Key variables in our study came from Medicare in, inpatient prospective systems. That basically gave us the average reimbursements from Medicare. To, um, we collected data on mortality rate and readmission rate from hospital compare data sets. And we collected information on the variables that helped us construct health IT in our study from HIMSS data set. Now, to construct health IT, systems in uh, health IT usage in our study, we averaged the values of enterprise EMR, CPOE, and structured physician documentation. Beyond these variables, we controlled for hospital level effects, um, hospital level attributes such as case mix index, whether a hospital is rural or urban, um, the geographical location of the hospital, meaning whether it's in Atlantic region, mountain Pacific region, or the Midwest region, and also, other attributes like whether the hospital is academic or not, and the ownership status of the hospital. So I don't want to I mean, go through these things um, in line by line. What I'm trying to say over here is the base models, model specifications in our study are pooled OLS and random, hospital random effects with time dummies. The rationale behind um, hospital random effects with time dummies is that it's, it's not very unreasonable to assume that the hospitals have been, across the country, have been pulled out randomly from the population of hospitals, whereas the, the, the observations across time for each hospital are likely to be correlated in some manner. <coughs> now, um, these are just, uh, uh, the, just the descriptive statistics of our, um, of our data set. Again, I want to remind you, we focused only on heart failure cases. So as you can see, the average payments, or the payments, Medicare payments per discharge for, for heart failure, major complications, and comorbidities, just one DRG varies from um, under $7,000 to over $35,000. This is just our data set, uh, panel data set comprising of 540 hospitals across the United States. Then we also find um, some amount of variation in mortality rate, readmission rate, and also health IT usage. Now, in, these are the results of our model specifications. I want to draw your attention towards the, the cells that have been highlighted in green and yellow. So let's start with mortality rate. As we had hypothesized, we found that hospitals with higher mortality rate are likely to receive lower average reimbursements from Medicare. When it comes to health IT usage, we found 
as we hypothesized, we found that higher health IT usage leads to uh, or is likely associated with higher Medicare reimbursements. But this statistical significance became marginal significance when we deployed random effects, hospital random effects with time dummies. The p-values are between 0.1 and 0.2, okay? Moving on to readmission. As we had hypothesized, we found that hospitals with higher readmission rates are more likely to receive higher average reimbursements from Medicare. And like we found in mortality rate, we again found positive association between health IT usage and average Medicare reimbursements. Now, just to go a little deeper into the, co the coefficients and what they imply, if we increase, if any hospital is able to increase its health IT usage by one standard deviation, that's approximately, um, that's approximately, um, approximately 23.779%, uh, that hospital will be able to, uh, that hospital will be able to realize an increase of approximately $180 per discharge uh, with that increase, okay? Now, these are the mediation effects results. So to, to examine the mediation effects of mortality rate and readmission rates, we deployed Sobel's test, and then we further, further tested the robustness of Sobel's test using Goodman statistic and Erwin st statistic. So again, I want to draw your attention to the cells that, are, that have been highlighted in blue. Uh, we found that <clears throat> there is only a weak partial mediation effect of mortality rate on the relationship between health IT usage and average Medicare reimbursements. The p-values are between 0.15 and approximately 0.2. As we had expected, we didn't find any, any kind of mediation effect of readmission rates on that relationship. Now, the rationale behind that, any, anything that might disincentivize, um, in a fee-for-service payment structure, anything that disincentivizes a hospital to go for low readmissions will be something that they'll try to stay away from. Right? So if we, if we had seen any kind of effect of health IT on readmissions and a further effect of readmissions on, on the average medical reimbursements, then that value, the p-values over there also would have been somewhere between 0.1.2 or less than 0.1. But as I said, anything that disincentivizes hospitals to go for low readmissions in a market structure which is dominated by fee-for-service payment model will not be uh, showing up in our results, and that's what we uh, came across. So, just a summary of our major findings. We found that hospitals with higher mortality rates are likely to be, are likely to realize low average reimbursements, whereas hospitals with higher readmissions, our admission rates are likely to realize higher average Medicare reimbursements. We found that health IT usage is likely associated with higher average Medicare reimbursements for the implementing hospitals. And as we expected, we found weak partial mediation effect of, of mortality rate on the relationship between health IT usage and average Medicare reimbursements. Now, there are several limitations in our study. One of the biggest limitations is that we have used the hospital level data set. So if there are any confounding factors that might be present at the patient level or the visit level, the effect of those confounding factors may or will not show up in our results, okay? This is particularly true for studying mediation effects because the variation of, of the effect of Hill IT on patient mortality or readmission and the further effect on, on the average, on the reimbursements per patient, that is much better studied at the patient level or the, or the visit level rather at the aggregate, more aggregated hospital level. <coughs> further, these results may not be generalizable to private pairs because our focus Payer was Medicare, <coughs> and uh, we also focused only on heart failure. So these these findings may not be applicable to, say, for example, pneumonia or myocardial infarctions either. Now, just to end uh, my presentation, there are several implications of our study, not only for policymakers but also for consumers, meaning patients, for payers, and healthcare providers, including hospitals, because ultimately these. The new system that is coming in, meaning PPS, PPSE penalties, this is not only going to affect the supply side, meaning the hospitals or the payers, but also the consumer side, meaning the demand, right? So even though we have focused primarily on the supply side, this, this study has uh, potentially further, exp further extensions, 
where we can further explore not only the supply side, but also the consumer side. Thank you very much. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sharon Tan. Um, it's always good to be back at White. I look forward to this trip, even though it's a very long flight and it's about 12 hours time zone difference. Um, and thank you all for the conference organizers to invite me to be a discussion for this paper. I really enjoyed reading this paper um, by Danish and Andranil. Um, because it addresses a very important and timely issue, as we've heard this morning. I think the medical system in US is moving. By the way, I'm not from US, so I'm also learning about the US medical system here. So I think you're moving from a fee-for-service uh, system towards a value-based system. Um, and as the authors have pointed out, prior studies have actually looked at more uh, focusing on health outcomes and healthcare costs in terms of the impact of health IT. But in that study, they're actually looking at reimbursements, average payments, um, and the mediating role of um, health IT through healthcare quality. So they talk about effectiveness as well as efficiency arguments. Um, and also like the fact that they had created their own data set from three different sources over a three year period. Um, I don't know if you mentioned this, but um, they actually had lagged the health IT data by a year. So you can actually see that the HIMSS data set is actually a year earlier than the outcomes data set. Also, they have done, as you can see in the presentation, very uh, robust, um, rigorous analytical um, analysis and have consistent results across the analysis. Okay, so this is their research model. Um, I won't go into detail about this. Um, so just some comments that I have about the paper. So first of all, um, the paper was motivated by uh, this idea of movement of um, FFS to a VBR kind of a model for reimbursement. And um, what I kind of found when I was reading the paper is that this is really interesting, but I think um, a lot of the hypotheses were going between a fee-for-service versus a VBR kind of uh, argument. For example, um, H1A was actually using a VBR perspective, whereas some of the other hypotheses were using a fee-for-service perspective. So I thought um, you know, it could lead to some confusion and perhaps the authors could consider sort of streamlining their arguments so that it's, um, it's either one or the other. Um, and also one of the hypotheses like H2 is actually um, not really related to fee-for-service where you're actually looking at the impact of health IT directly on reimbursement. So I think this is probably a more of a positioning kind of a issue, but I, I think the authors can probably work around, work on this. Um, second issue is, uh, not maybe second suggestion or comment, is um, the idea behind medical payment and hospital costs. Um, one of the contributions I've pointed out in the first slide is that they are focusing on reimbursement rather than cost um, as the outcome variable. Um, one of, but some of the hypotheses, as I realized, they've kind of used cost reduction as a rationale for why they should behave in a way to increase reimbursement. And um, the authors have also done a very good job in terms of explaining in that paper that you know, cost reimbursement and costs are not the same thing. Okay, because um, the last two bullets are actually taken from that paper itself. Because sometimes there are elements of strategic negotiation or there are some kind of comprehensive contracts that results in um, disalignment of costs and reimbursement. So I thought um, perhaps another thing is to think about um, trying to use more of a reimbursement um, argument to explain why the behavior of the hospitals are as such. Okay. And um, some of... My final few points are related to a more clear explanation of the underlying mechanisms behind the hypothesis. Um, the first set of hypotheses, H1, H1A and H1B, um, as I kind of looked at um, the, the, the rationale behind why hospitals are behaving in this way, it seems to be that they are driven by the reimbursements that are given. So they are trying to act in a way that they can actually get more reimbursement. For example, um, you know, if I can actually uh, treat more patients, um, do more services, I can actually increase my reimbursement. So reimbursement actually seems to be driving behavior rather than the other way around. So I was wondering whether the authors would perhaps uh, even consider whether they could put reimbursement as an independent variable and um, maybe looking at IT use, IT usage as a intermediate variable as, in the sense that hospital behavior is actually the outcome rather than the independent variable. OK, 
Okay, and um, regarding H3, this is the hypothesis that argues that IT has a mediating role on, um, the, on reimbursement. And again, the authors argued um, in that paper that the link between health IT and health quality outcomes, meaning mortality rates and readmission rates, um, there has been quite a bit of mixed findings in the literature. Um, so I hope they could maybe explain the black, black box a bit better in terms of why they argue that in their paper, they expect to see a positive relationship. Um, and I thought it was interesting because you, they had data looking at different types of IT systems, EMR, CPOE, as well as uh, documentation. Uh, maybe you can argue it more in terms of how these systems actually influences the outcomes, and perhaps maybe also consider running your analysis based on individual systems rather than different uh, than kind of aggregating them together. Because I think the different systems will actually play a different role. Okay, and for um, second hypothesis, um, I think the authors mentioned that this is more of an efficiency argument. So I just wanted to suggest maybe to drop the effectiveness argument because then it would actually make your um, storyline a little bit more like confusing again. Okay, last point. Okay, um, the, do the, the last point is about association versus causality. I don't know if the authors were trying to be strategic in terms of focusing more on association rather than saying that this is a causal effect because they actually have longer, longitudinal data, um, three-year period data, um, and they have lagged IT by a year. So in actuality, um, there is actually um, a causal effect. Also, the model seems to suggest that there is a causality. But um, so, you know, they have actually said that they are focusing on association. So I wonder if maybe a longer period of time um, of data would actually help um, address, get, get, get sort of a more of a um, results that focuses on causation rather than association. That's it. That's all I have. OK. Um, so good afternoon. My name is Karthik Ganju. Uh, and today I'll be presenting my paper, uh, which looks at if the adoption of EMR systems uh, is associated with inflated Medicare reimbursements. Uh, this is a co-authored paper with Hilal Atasoy and Paul Pavlo. And we're at the Fox School of Business at Temple University. Um, so generally, there's been a, a support for the adoption of these systems from government via the passage of High Tech Act. Um, and this was motivated by the belief that these systems would sort of reduce costs and it would improve quality. My dissertation essentially looks at some of the unintended consequences of the adoption of these systems. Uh, so in my, one of my other papers, I look at what happens to neighboring hospitals when, these, when hospitals adopt EMR systems. And in this paper, we looked at, at the phenomenon of upcoding. Um, now, there's been sort of conflicting evidence in the literature. There have been a couple of papers that have looked at this. And we sort of try and use a larger panel, a longer panel. And we use the quasi-natural experiment that sort of is implemented for during the duration of our panel to sort of suggest mechanisms about why there can be these conflicting uh, results. Also, we sort of use it as a mechanism to rule out alternate ex uh, explanations. So what is upcoding? Um, upcoding is a process by which, so when patients uh, are sort of diagnosed or treated, they're placed in diagnosis-related groups, and hospitals are based on, uh, are reimbursed on the basis of which DRG they place the patient in. So these are two DRGs that um, deal with respiratory ailments. So one is without complications and comorbidities or major complications and comorbidities. In 2012, it was reimbursed at a rate close to $5,000. Average rate, and uh, if you were able to document that it had major complications of comorbidities, uh, you got a reimbursement. The hospital got a uh, reimbursement of a rate that was close to eight thousand dollars. So basically, upcoding deals with strategically placing patients in more complex DRGs to sort of uh, uh, qualify them for higher reimbursements to the hospital. Now, the CPOE system is essentially a system that's been sort of argued that could lead to um, upcoding taking place. The computerized physician order entry system basically allows physicians to electronically store and share data with different uh, providers, and as well as record symptoms of patients and test results. And it's had a couple of positive effects. There have been a couple of studies that have looked at this. Uh, it's shown to have greater adherence to guidelines-based care, 
a reduction in medical errors. And basically, some studies have shown that physicians prescribe a promo appropriate doses after the, after the implementation of these systems. So it is like the CPOE system has had many uh, positive effects. Um, now the question is, does CPOE facilitate upcoding? So what researcher, or uh, what the argument is that uh, CPOE systems often come with built-in auto-population systems or templates for helping physicians record information for patients. Um, and it's intended as a mechanism to store time, uh, to reduce the time that physicians take in storing patient documentation. The concern, however, is that these templates can actually include keywords which can then qualify the patient for a higher placement in a higher DRG, or it can sort of extract data from other sort of sources and, and represent that data to allow uh, these um, patients to be placed in a higher DRG. So Sanyal has this example uh, where he sort of argues that when these systems were implemented, it was able to uh, pull social history of patients from another data source to make it look like this social history was discussed during the interaction with the patient when that may not have been ca the case. And this richer information in some cases can sort of be used to file for higher DRGs. Um, the main dependent variable that we use is the case mix index of the hospital, and I'll sort of explain what it is. But what we argue is that the adoption of CPOE is correlated with a higher case mix for the hospital. Previous research has also argued that for-profit hospitals are more likely to indulge in uh, practices that are similar to upcoding. And this is basically because there are institutional objectives for for-profit hospitals to be sort of maximizing their reimbursements or their revenues. The arguments behind this is that um, hospitals essentially consist of two structures. So there's an administrative side and there's a clinical side. And in for-profit hospitals, there's actually more alignment between the objectives of, for, of the clinical side with the administrative side. And this is done by getting uh, physicians onto the board of uh, for-profit hospitals by offering them equity in the management of the hospital. So there was a hospital in Florida that went, that was sort of bought over by a for-profit chain. Um, and over one year, it sort of, uh, the number of people that, and the proportion of patients that it reimbursed in, I think it was respiratory um, ailments, increased from 31% to 76%. And this proportion actually jumped to 90% over the course of two years. Uh, whereas the hospital down the street, there was no effect. Um, so there has been previous uh, research which has sort of argued that for-profit hospitals do show evidence of uh, uh, practices in line with upcoding. Uh, however, the research, uh, the evidence about this is mixed. So basically, we look at if CPOE adoption in for-profit hospitals is having this effect or not. The third issue that we look at in our paper is a recovery audit program that was instituted during the duration of our panel. Um, so it was basically instituted by Medicare by contracting with four auditors across the US uh, as a mechanism to sort of check what was happening and check claims that were submitted to Medicare. The statement of objectives very clearly said that the recovery auditor may issue denial when the submitted service was upcoded. And uh, in 2010, two out of the nation's four auditors actually listed upcoding as one of their main sort of concerns that they were encountering when they were checking claims. So we sort of look at uh, this audit program as a quasi-natural experiment that uh, takes place during the duration of our panel. And we argue that this evidence of upcoding may actually be moderated by the presence of this audit program. So just to uh, quickly give you an overview of the data, we use the HIMSS data for the CPOE adoption. The case mix data, we actually concentrate on Medicare. So we look at IPPS files, inpatient prospective payment system files. Uh, we use US Census data for uh, sociodemographic data about the county that the hospital is located in. And we use Medicare cost reports for hospital operational data. And we developed this panel from 2004 to 2011. Um, and this is what we do our analysis on. So uh, we use, as a main dependent variable, we use the case mix index of the hospital. Each DRG is assigned a relative weight. So here I've got two examples of DRGs. So the first one is if you've got a heart uh, transplant or heart assist technology, 
and that was given a relative weight of 25, whereas if you had a respiratory infection, you were placed in a DRG that had a, a weight that was closer to one, and the way that you get this case mix is you sort of average the relative weights across all your different patients, and that essentially is our mo main variable of interest. The empirical specification that we use is pretty standard. We use a fixed effects uh, model. We control for the presence of other systems. We sort of check uh, if there's collinearities that are appearing there as well. We include hospital fixed effects and time fixed effects and cluster errors by hospital and year. OK, so these are the main effects. Essentially, does CPOE um, show evidence of a higher reporting of case mix index? And even when we include other controls, such as other the presence of other systems, we actually find that it does. Um, so these are the average effects across all hospitals. When we break it down by for-profit hospitals, we actually find that the effect of these systems is statistically significant in for-profit hospitals. But on average, in non-for-profit hospitals, there's no statistically significant effect. Additionally, what, for, uh, what previous research has argued is that these practices may not be just limited to for-profit hospitals, but may actually be present in other hospitals that are co-located for, uh, with for-profit hospitals. So we do sort of a market level, hospital market level analysis, and we look at the number of for-profit hospitals that exist that are co-located inside a hospital referral region. So what we find is if there's a not-for-profit hospital and it's co-located with other with a number of other for-profit hospitals, it actually shows greater evidence of using CPOE to uh, sort of increase the case mix that it has, or its CPOE presence is actually correlated with a higher level of case mix in uh, the hospital. OK, next we come to the audit program. What we find is that when the audit program is not in place, there's a positive and statistically significant effect. However, the presence of this audit program actually has the potential to moderate this effect um, of a presence of CPOE leading to a case, higher case mix. Now what actually happens is that two out of the nation's four uh, auditors actually de develop capabilities to identify copied and over-documented records. Over-documented records is essentially the use of templates in, uh, for document, do documenting patient records. The question is, is this capability actually uh, going to have a greater impact on uh, a lower case mix of the hospital? And we actually find that if a hospital adopts CPOE and it's actually and it's, uh, in an uh, audit region where the auditor has developed this capability, it actually shows a negative and statistically significant uh, impact on the case mix of the hospital. However, if it's not within these, it actually does not have this effect. So what are our implications? We find implications uh, in line with upcoding. However, the audit program and specifically the capabilities of auditors have the potential to moderate this effect. And this could be partially the reason why we find uh, mixed uh, effects in previous literature. Uh, we um, find that additional payments uh, uh, using uh, the effects that we find Using back-of-the-envelope calculations, we find that the adoption of CPOE is associated with higher reimbursements of uh, $298 million uh, against total payments uh, of Medicare Part A uh, that were $136 billion. Um, and additionally, what we find is that, um, that there's actually this sort of, uh, when the incentives of the financial side and the clinical side of the hospital are aligned, we actually find that there is a greater impact on upcoding. Um, and they're stronger when there's less demarcation, essentially, between the financial and clinical objectives of the audit, uh, of the objectives of the hospital. And on, evident, on average, we find that the audit program has the ability to moderate the effects of upcoding. And specifically, the abilities of the auditors have the ability to moderate this effect of upcoding. Thank you. I'll just take you two minutes of your time. <laughs> so I'm Wendy Du. I'm from George Washington University, so I'm local. My campus is only 10 to 15 minutes drive from here. It's a great pleasure to read this paper. And also, Kartik has been very meticulous in sending me the papers and the slides, which allow me to um, sort of read through the whole things. Um, 
Um, I have no expertise in this area, so for me this is a very interesting learning experience. Um, just by reading the title, and when I first got the paper, I'm very intrigued. Because I think as Kartik mentioned, and also many other presentations today, we have seen a relatively large body of um, research and discussions talking about the impact of uh, adoption of EMR systems. Most of them are talking about how great is the EMR system in terms of helping reduce, reducing the cost and uh, improving the quality of the service. But they are really, actually, this paper is study taking a very different angle and looking at the unintended uh, effect of uh, EMR system adoption. So I'm just quickly summarize of the paper. Um, um, so this paper look at the effects of adoption of uh, EMR system, particularly the CPOE system on upcoding. And ultimately, that would actually imply the, the inflation of the overall in reimbursement cost. So the analysis is a fixed effect estimation, and, and they also very nicely designed, um, taking advantage of the gradually uh, rollover of the auditing program as a perfect external demand shocks for um, uh, the quasi, to set up the quasi-natural experiment settings. And, and Carter actually didn't present this in the paper. They also conduct the various of robustness tests to rule out the alternative expl uh, explanations, uh, endogeneity effect, falsification test, and also handle the reverse causality. So um, the results does show a significant more complex patient's coding after adoption the uh, after the adoption of CPOE system. And um, I think this has uh, potentially significant policy implications in terms of the overall inflation of the Medicare system. We also have heard a lot in the news about the worries and discussions about our Medicare systems. Um, so some sauce, I, 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 I even reluctant to, to, to say this is comments and suggestions. So again, this is just some, some thoughts came, to, it came into to my mind while I was reading this paper. Um, I, I'm very intrigued by the difference between for-profit and non-profit hospitals. And um, the study, the results actually show that there's significant difference. And the results also show that the non-profit hospitals would somehow influence by the for-profit hospitals if they're located in the same areas. So I'm just wondering maybe, um, maybe they can look into a little bit more nuances of their data to look to see if there's any spillover effects among uh, non-profit and for-profit hospitals. And not, not only between for-profit and non-profit hospitals, but also the inter-hospital effects. Whether such spillover effects carries from hospitals to hospitals, because we have seen a lot of cases transferred among different hospitals. And also the paper mentioned that CPOE is just one of the EMR system adopted by many of the hospitals today. There are many other systems that actually work with CPOE system. So it, it will be, I'm curious about the sort of interactions among different um, EMR systems. How would they ultimately also um, influence upcoding and the ultimate uh, reimbursement cost? Um, and also, uh, I actually, I was discussing to one of my friends about this. This is a question I had, maybe a very naive question as well. I noticed that the paper, and along with many other papers, mostly use Medicare cases, Medicare data, because it's probably publicly available. Also probably accounts for a large chunk of the, the expenses um, for the hospitals. So I'm just, I'm, this is just a naive question I have is, uh, do we also look at uh, other cases, like normal population cases, um, and compare, compare and contrast with the Medicare cases? And lastly, I would say that um, maybe um, they want to, because they have seven years of data, so maybe a dynamic setting, a dynamic panel data setting would help to establish more causal relationships, because the current um, mixed case index may be highly correlated with next time period. So uh, uh, more dynamic settings may be uh, more helpful in, ter in terms of establishing the causal relationships. So that's it. Thank you very much. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kang Kang Chi, 
And I'm a, a PhD student at Michigan State University. I'm happy to be here today uh, to present our um, uh, work on the, uh, the, the impact of IT on the revenue side, revenue management uh, in hospitals. So this is a joint work uh, with uh, my, one of my uh, committee members, uh, Dr. Krishnan, and also uh, two co-authors from uh, the University of Michigan Dearborn and uh, Harvard Business School. So just to try to uh, give you a quick overview of this study. So this paper specifically studies the association between uh, the adoptions of IT systems and the revenue management practices in hospitals. So uh, we uh, hypothesized that IT facilitates revenue management in a hospital through three major mechanisms. The first one, one is decrease of the uncompensated compensated ratio, care ratio. The second one is IT helps improve the utilization rate or capacity utilization rate. And the third, uh, I find a, a lot of uh, uh, common interest with the, some uh, uh, presenters here today uh, that we, we hypothesize IT will increase the likelihood of, uh, of up doing upcoding. So I'll do a quick do a, a literature review and the description of the data in a few uh, slides, but just to give you a some uh, uh, summary of our results. We find that IT does help uh, revenue management overly, and, but the more interestingly, we find that those effects um, take time to manifest. Okay, so uh, in the literature of IT and the firm performance, is that we, we've, we've seen a lot of studies that, uh, who look, uh, which look at this IT uh, impact on firms' performance, such as operations, efficiency, and uh, other productivity, stuff like that. Uh, we also, there is a another set of literatures uh, look at the complementarities between the IT adoption and the firm performance, basically arguing that um, IT itself doesn't create value that much. We have to have uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, corresponding organizational changes okay, to make IT work. So there's a, issue, a topic about a complementarity between the organization and processes and IT adoptions. So here comes to our third uh, point is that some, also, uh, some papers look at the uh, IT adoption in organizations and did find that organizations require time to learn and adapt to the new systems because some of the systems are just uh, complicated. And, uh, and we believe this, this phenomenon happens in the healthcare uh, uh, sector as well. So nurses, physicians, administrators all need time to learn how to use the system as well as to adapt to the new systems. So basically we'll, we will uh, find that uh, uh, we can expect that the, the, the things might go wrong at the first time, at the first beginning. So, so let's also look at the, the, the literature of uh, uh, IT in the healthcare sectors. So we have uh, previous studies look at IT's uh, uh, impact on the hospital's profitability, productivity, costs, quality. However, we I haven't seen any study to look at specifically on the revenue management side uh, of the, of the uh, per, uh, firm performance. So that's the focus of, uh, of our, this paper. So we argue that the firms do manage their revenue like they manage their costs. So, um, so think about a regular company, um, now a company outside of the uh, healthcare sector. So there are several ways for them to manage their revenue. So they could revenge it through product mix, customer mix. Uh, they can choose the uh, different market coverage, segmentation, or they can do some improper activities to enhance their, their revenue, such as like kickbacks, something like that. But think about the healthcare uh, sector. Uh, there are those things, uh, in, in, in the many hospitals, they cannot do many of these things. They cannot choose the patients. Okay, in a non in a in a in a, in a uh, emergency setting, they cannot turn away patients, regardless uh, their uh, uh, based on their ability to pay. So there are a lot of uh, uh, often times that the, the, there are some costly services that are not compensated, some uh, uh, because of uh, indigenous populations, 
Well, sometimes the costly are the cost are under reimbursed. For example, in a Medicaid situation, okay, and even in a in a、um, Medicare or private insurance、uh, part of it,、uh, those fees are、uh, th- these are what we call the fees、uh, cap schemes. So for a certain、uh, treatment, the hospital can only receive a、uh, a flat fee. Uh, a fee cap, cap the flat fee for one's treatment. So there's really no way for them to、um, enhance their revenue uh, 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 in the health care systems. And 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 the last but not but not the least,、uh, even for some hospitals, they cannot even turn away the patients even in a non-emergency condition. Okay. So here are the reasons that we 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 think that. Uh, 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 We、uh, sometimes that the, the hospital have to rely on something else to enhance their revenue because these are common way common ways that don't, don't, don't work in the healthcare system. So we argue that uh, uh, hospitals could use IT to、uh, revenue their、uh, to manage their revenues uh, through uh, either decreasing the uncompensated ratio、uh, care ratio or improving their capacity utilization to be more efficient. Right. So.、Uh, The first hypothesis that we are uh, we uh, suggest that IT、uh, will decrease the uncompensated care ratio、uh, for several reasons. Uh, firstly, uh, IT really does uh, give the the hospitals、uh, the ability uh, to uh, to know better who are their、uh, patients and how、uh, and there maybe their financial uh, uh, statuses. Okay, so there are also uh, uh, some 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 applications called like a medical necessity check or something like that that helps the hospital to to、uh, reduce, if not avoid, uh, uh, a repetitive or unnecessary checks and medications、uh, for the hospital. So、uh, it's especially important for those patients who cannot. Afford to pay, right? So that reduces the the cost part of it. So uh, uh, the other thing is that、um, even if the there is a bad debt、uh, that's happened,、uh, the the IT gives the, the the hospital more ability to chase back those bad debts, get better, get those money back. Even if they cannot get them back, they can still.、Uh, I mean, there are more ways to for hospitals to to get the subsidies or compensation from third party uh, uh, agencies, from government or charity groups, something like that. So definitely, IT gives them more flexibility, okay, choices to reduce their uncompensated care, uh, the uh, uncompensated care、uh, fees. So that's the reason we we think that IT will help the、uh, hospitals to reduce this bad debt ratio. Second,、uh, we think that IT helps increasing the capacity utilization rate by enabling、uh, some patient flow man by in- enabling superior patient flow management, and also IT system help、uh, the the、well, literature finds that IT system help the organization、uh, health hospitals to identify the bottlenecks of the whole system. So in that,、uh, so、uh, in a in a real case, we might have some applications like、uh, patient scheduling or bed management. They could efficient more efficiently allocate the resources uh, uh, of the hospital. So increase、uh, by in, by by using the resources more efficiently, the hospital can、uh, hopefully re-、uh, generate more revenues. So that's the second part. The third part is also highly consistent with the, the some other studies that presented here. And also the literature、uh, about this upcoding. So upcoding again is、um, the improper behavior、uh, that the hospital adopts uh, to re- uh, increase their their revenue. So for example, for a hosp for a, a, a patient admitted to the uh, uh, hospital in a condition of respiratory conditions. So if the if the the patient doesn't have the、uh, complicated implication, but、uh, Uh, that hospital, the, the 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 physician or the coding uh, 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 administrator uh, assigns the patient to、uh, the highest level of、uh, respiratory condition. It could generate almost four thousand dollars more in a single case by just doing this without incurring any additional costs. 
So that's why we think that uh, uh, that's a very good incentive for us uh, for for them to do that. And uh, the reason we think that IT helps in that regard is because. So think about it, the, the applications like EMR, like physician documentation in EMR. It gives the physicians, uh, it makes it easier for them to, to, to document the whole process. At the same time, it makes the, the justification of upcoding easier, okay? So when they present this uh, bill to the payer, the payer might come back and say, uh, say oh, hey, why you uh, uh, think this patient needs the highest level of care? Well, the uh, IT system helps that uh, explain this behavior uh, easily. That's, that's our uh, hypothesis. So quickly uh, go through the data uh, sources of this study. We used the, the HIMSS database for the IT adoptions. And we also, uh, on the financial side, uh, we used the data from um, um, California Office of State Health Healthcare and Plan Development, something like that. I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, have the full name on that, yeah. So uh, basically, this database reports uh, the uh, financial and discharge data for all the, almost 400 plus hospitals in the California uh, for the uh, entire 10 years. Well, we already we have the data for 10 years, and um, and Hims has the IT statuses. So let me quickly uh, do an introduction about this. Uh, our variable. So dependent variable, the first one is bad debt ratio. Basically, it's the sum of the uncompensated revenue divided by the total patient revenue. So the second one is the capacity utilization. That's the, the total, total patient days divided by the available patient days, which is the number of available beds times 365. And the third one is that the, the uh, DRG79, which is the upcoding measure. So 79 is one of the DRG code. That is uh, that belongs to the respiratory ailments, so it is the highest level of uh, seriousness. So, if the patient has highest, uh, most serious respiratory uh, conditions, he or she should be uh, assigned to this DRG seventy nine. Otherwise, the hospital can assign the patient to eighty, eighty one, something like that, which is lower. The fee are lower. So these are the independent variables that we are looking at. So instead of just looking at ER, EMR adoptions, we also look at a more aggregated measure. We look at the business and a clinical IT depth and business and a clinical IT scope. So by, by depth, we mean that we, we look at the number of live and operational IT or business IT applications, clinical and business IT applications in the hospital adopted. And, in this, and as for scope, we look at the number of categories the hospital has alive in operations uh, applications in. We also look at basic EMR, advanced EMR, and, and other any EMR as a dummy coatings, uh, as per the uh, uh, literature says. So here are some of the control variables that we also uh, look at. That and here are the hospital level and at the DRG level. So DRG level only applies to the model that we look at as DRG, which controls for the severity of the group of the people who are uh, assigned to this, this group. So here's the, the summary statistics. So our data for the financial, uh, for the bad debt ratio and capacity utilization uh, goes from 2002 to 2012. However, our data for DRG upcoding goes from 2002 to 2007 because after 2007, the coding mechanism dramatically changed. So we don't want to include those data uh, to create bias. So that's why we limited it. And you can see a, a lower uh, number of observations for the DRG. So we run some uh, models and we find that for the uncompensated ratio, these are the controls. Let me show you your results. Surprisingly, we find that uh, the clinical IT scope actually is positively related to the uncompensated ratio. So this is the, the, the immediate effect, not a lagged effect. So that's quite surprising at the first time. Um, you can see in all, uh, uh, but we, uh, but we also run a, a, a lagged effect. We look at the, the lagged effect of a clinical IT scope, which we also find that, still find a positive effect, but you can see the magnitude decreases a, uh, a lot and, and it's not very significant. So, uh, 
we we discussed in the paper about this, the justification of this. We we, we simply argue that the, the 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 complicated systems need time for the hospital to adapt. That's why I uh, I said that it, it might create some problems even in the beginning before it delivers values. So we also look at the capacity rate uh, utilization ratio, and fortunately in model two we find that IT business IT depth positively correlates with the uh, capacity utilization, which is good. Also, interestingly, we find that there's interaction before it and the hospital uh, size, basically arguing that the, if the hospital is large, it is more likely or less likely well, to have, uh, for it to have a higher capacity ratio. So it's, for the large hospital, it's less, uh, uh, harder for it to, to, to allocate the resources. And uh, also the lag effect of that also suggests the same thing. So upcoding, also surprisingly, we find that uh, initially uh, IT doesn't create value for, uh, uh, well, doesn't facilitate upcoding, negative things. But when, when we run some uh, lag effects, we find that uh, clinical IT depths does facilitate the upcoding, and especially in the four hospitals uh, 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 subgroups. And we look at the, the T minus two, two year lag effect, we also find the same results and the results stay stronger and stronger. So uh, the last thing is we look at the interaction effect between the lagged IT, clinical IT scope and the case mix index. And we find that there's a negative interaction um, here. Try to quickly find, uh, su summarize it. So we didn't find uh, 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 the impact of IT on un uncompensated care in the beginning. However, the, 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 the reverse the cor uh, correlation uh, decreases over time. But we, we did find that IT helps the youth capacity utilization and it is very stronger. And it, uh, more interestingly, larger hospitals are harder to manage their resources. And thirdly, IT does uh, create, uh, uh, does facilitate upcoding, but those effects happened uh, in the later years after the adoption of systems. So uh, just uh, try to give some uh, uh, acknowledgement of the limitation of this paper. First of all, it is strictly in the state of California because of the data. but. At the same time, it gives us some, uh, uh, well, it, it reduces the heterogeneity effect of the state, so hopefully. Uh, and secondly, uh, we it's a, it's a current, uh, it's a working paper, so we haven't run any analysis uh, to address the endogeneity issue, something like that. So we are not uh, arguing any causal inferences here. Instead, we just look at association between the two. And thirdly, for the DRG measure, we only look at one DRG group. However, in the previous uh, literature paper, they look at multiple groups, and there are some other alternative measures of DRG. So hopefully we will uh, continue to work on, on those issues. Thank you very much. So uh, it's my privilege uh, to be the discussant on the paper, Does IT Enable Revenue Management in Hospitals by Chi et al? Um, so um, I guess in addition to looking at how IT Im impacts or creates uh, usefulness or makes it um, how people use it to the good, it's also good to look at how IT can be misused. Um, so it, this paper is along those lines. Um, in fact, I think last year um, Lee uh, uh, presented a paper here in White 2014 that talked about how EMR is associated with upcoding and um, so this paper basically extends that, that paper in, in some ways. For example, it looks at revenue management more broadly. So not just upcoding, but at revenue management, which is a piece of your overall profitability uh, issue. Um, and in addition to just looking at whether an EMR is adopted or not, these, people go, uh, these uh, authors go into more detail and look at um, clinical uh, IT versus business IT, the depth and scope, et cetera. Um, so here are some of my comments for the authors. The first is, uh, when I read the paper, it seemed like the un uncompensated care costs seem to include both bad debt costs as well as charity care, because both of these are uncompensated. 
So, um, so there, there could be these causality issues as to whether the management is um, reallocating resources in such a way as to decrease charity ca uh, care, though they don't, you know, cannot do that very overtly, uh, to increase IT uh, investments. Um, so therefore, IT could be uh, negatively correlated with uncompensated care uh, cost. Um, and also, they find the result that IT actually increases uncompensated care costs. So again, the question is of causality as to whether the hospital is increasing both charity care as well as IT apps. And so, the uncompensated care cost is going up. Upcoding. So now, this is a very tricky issue. Even though I said that we need to figure out how to uh, how to figure how to understand how IT can be misused. Question is, how do you measure upcoding? Uh, we saw a previous paper which, uh, which, uh, in which they measured upcoding by just looking at case mix index. But in the past, we have always looked at case mix index as a measure of the, the clinical complexity of the hospital. So suddenly now we turn it around and say, oh, it means uh, it could also mean upcoding. It's kind of, it's, it's a difficult, um, uh, I guess, proposition. So same way, uh, Chi et al. use... Um, um, the DRG79, which is pulmonary, uh, yeah, respiratory complications um, with comorbidities, uh, and uh, as the numerator and the denominator is all other respiratory uh, complications. So the question is, just because that number has gone up doesn't mean there's been upcoding, right? Um, it could just be that people got sicker or the Medicare patients were sicker that, that came in. Um, so therefore, actually, Lee, Lee in White 2014 actually used a strategy where they tried to um, look at there could be DRGs that have a higher chance of upcoding, right? Um, but then we could also think of it the other way that hospital administrators will also be strategic. They know that auditors know that these DRGs are on have a higher chance of upcoding. So they won't upcode on the higher uh, chance of being caught, but they'd rather upcode on the ones in which they have lesser chance of being caught. So I, I don't know the answer. I'm just raising some issues here as to how could you measure upcoding. Um, finally, oh, well, okay. Um, yeah, about the application of lag models, uh, I find that you have used clinical IT and clinical um, IT T minus one in two separate models, and I typically, I thought that it's best to put them both in, at the same time in a, in a model to understand how lag effects are um, 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 surfacing. Uh, finally, um, IT correlation with size, uh, because you have a count of IT apps, they could be correlated with the size, and more bigger a hospital, more likely its capacity utilization is low, and so that negative correlation is there. So maybe you need to not just put a uh, control variable for, for size, but actually normalize the IT variable by size. Um, finally, IT use, misuse, um, Sharon Tan just ta talked about it. So is IT responsible for its misuse, uh, or is it the people? Um, you know, just like the gun control thing. Uh, um, so is IT, um, or are there other mediating variables such as IT design? You know, a lot of EHR vendors are selling their products saying that, hey, buy our product because uh, we will help you optimize the coding. And, and that, that seems like a euphemism for upcoding. Um, so the question is what controls are there, what implementation is done, and I also know that a lot of, uh, there's a lot of turnover among coders, billing coders, because they don't want to do the unethical act action of upcoding. Okay, with that, I, my time's up, so I'll end it here. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions? Do we have time for questions? Okay. Questions? Yes. So actually, my question was in the second paper. And I think, Nirup, you alluded to that a little bit, although I think your comments were more directed at the last one. So I was a little bit confused, Karthik, in your study design, um, you know, what was the motivation for using case mix index as your dependent variable? Because again, you know, in most studies, we've seen it as a, a control for complexity. And to equate that to some measure of upcoding is, uh, you know, it, it's, 
it may be quite inaccurate because you know um, it may be really capturing some changes in patient mix for all you know uh, as opposed to <clears throat> um, you know where they are uh, actually changing the coding of the the DRG um, so that one I thought you know I was really not very clear on the uh, the motivation of using that and then also the linkage between CPOE and uh, case mix index because you know as far as I can tell CPOE is just um, a tool uh, to place orders more efficiently uh, not specifically to increase upcoding. Um, okay. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, so there are two parts to the question. One is why did we use case mix and one is how does CPOE affect case mix. Um, so why did we choose case mix? We choose, chose case mix because it's basically the reported complexity of patients, right? Without the presence of CPOE or any upcoding, it is the true sort of measure of complexity of patients in a hospital. What we're interested in is, is the complexity of patients changing or the reported complexity of patients changing in uh, after the adoption of CPOE systems. Um, so once you sort of code people in more complex DRGs, you have... One second, but it's not the same patient. The patients themselves might change. The, yeah, so that's the second question, right? So we've looked at certain metrics of is the uh, patient profile changing. Um, the one sort of strong thing that we use in our paper is this idea of the audit program, right? Um, what if the presence, if the characteristics of the, if the sort of pool of patients to the hospital was actually changing uh, after the adoption of, uh, with the presence of CPOE systems, um, you'd actually not find these differing effects in the audit program, right? The complexity of patients, if it was not upcoding, it was just a movement of more complex patients to the hospital adopting CPOE, you'd actually see a positive effect of CPOE even under, case, under the audit program leading to a higher complexity of patients. You wouldn't see these differing effects. What we are arguing is that it's a CPOE system which in, uh, allows for even automatic chart generation if that's enabled, auto-population of templates that actually then allows to a hospital to code for a higher, a more complex patient to place them in a higher DRG. Hi, just a co just a comment on the uh, on the last paper. Uh, you have differentiated for profit and non profit hospitals. Uh, every hospital wants to be profitable, so the the for profit designation is just a tax code. There are for profit hospitals which are not profitable, and there are some non profit hospitals which are extremely profitable. So it may be worthwhile when you have the differentiation to look at to differentiate them into profitable and not profitable which is not the same as for-profit and not-for-profit. So did they really make a profit? And that data is out there. So that, that could be your two groups. And then look at the uh, association with IT, and I highly doubt it will be causal. IT is a you know, huge enabler, but by itself to say that you know, it, it causes profit or makes a huge loss, I think it's a stretch. And uh, um, the CMI, and that's the point I think uh, you were alluding to, is, uh, uh, is not a proxy for coding. And hospitals have clear coding systems when we went into CAC, you know, computer assisted coding, assisted coding, and you have CPT and ICD-9 codes which you can get standard deviations and mean and medians, et cetera. And that can be taken as a, as a function of up coding or appropriate coding or down coding. CMI is not a good uh, indicator. CMI is strictly, uh, as you mentioned, you know, patient acuity and, and how sick the patients are. Uh, just one last comment on upcoding. In the paper world, most hosp hospitals were relatively down coding. Then we got CAC, now we are appropriately coding. That doesn't mean it is upcoding, relatively speaking, but now we are coding appropriately. So it's not a bad thing. You know, there's so much data on how hospitals have upcoded over the past few years, but it also in relation to CAC. So uh, it's not a bad thing. Thanks. We've sort of looked at that in the paper in one of the robustness sections, but didn't have time. Okay, thank you very much.